You're listening to Body Talk, Healthy Living Sonoma Style. I'm Heather Morgan, Nutrition and Healthy Living Coach, and I invite you to stay tuned for the next hour. Get educated, get inspired, and become a healthier you. I'm Heather Morgan, Nutrition and Healthy Living Coach. You are listening to Body Talk. Today I have Dr. Sam Shea, who is going to be calling us very shortly to follow up on our conversation from a few weeks ago, um, Video Game Addictions, and he will be sharing his holiday survival guide with us because chances are you may know somebody that not only um, is too far into the video games, but also just screen... uh, Uh, you know, screen addiction, you know, someone that's constantly looking at their phone, constantly looking at their Facebook, constantly returning the emails, you know, this is all, um, it's just sort of the next generation of addictions that's out there. And Dr. Sam Shea really has an amazing story and a a really great program to help people work beyond their uh, addiction, uh, their video game addiction. And I wanted to feature him on the show because I really, I found his work, thought it was amazing. And so we're going to take a call from him here. And uh, hi there. um, Hey there, Dr. Shea. How are you? I'm good. Awesome. Thank you for turning that down. Sure. Hey, everybody. We have Dr. Sam Shea again calling in from New Zealand. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. So what? Uh, what? you're on your Wednesday there, huh? It's Wednesday at 1120 here. 22, rather. Ah, okay. So, yeah. So just a little bit over 24 hours difference. Interesting. So now, wait, real quick question for you. Do you celebrate Thanksgiving there? Uh, and only the uh, American expats <laughs> <laughs> right? celebrate Thanksgiving here. You're right. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, That's... it's kind of it's it's the one time it's the one year where all the American expats kind of come together on a um, for for a meal and you know. Yeah, sure. So Get together and have your American yeah, yeah. celebration. I love it. That's fantastic. So I, I'm going to assume there's going to be no video games at that dinner. <laughs> uh, definitely not, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have a quick question for you. Uh, for those of you that are just tuning in, Dr. Sam Shea is a video game um, addiction expert. So you, by experience, have become an expert as a doctor, but also having been addicted vid- to video games yourself, um, have created truly amazing resources and programs to support families um, who are families, and when I say that, because we're talking the children and the parents, um, families who are uh, experiencing this, and um, you yourself, 25 years, I think you were addicted to video games, and so how does that, ha- like, how does that show up in your life now, and is it still challenging for you? Do you feel like you want to just check out and go play a video game, or are you pretty good? Well, the, there's there's a, there's a there's lots to unpack there. One is that um, what what happened is uh, I I had a 25 year history. I mean, I haven't played I haven't played a video game at all since two, uh, was it over well over well over a year ago. Okay. Um, and the impulse to play is yeah. the same as any impulse with anyone who has an addictive impulse, whether right. it's food or shopping or TV or Facebook. Mm-hmm. And the urge to play is, is, is this. I have a stressful thought about something, whether it's about a deadline or someone in my life or a situation or anything that I'm experiencing or perceiving, projecting, or remembering that's stressful. Then I have that. That's the first step: is a stressful thought. And the second step is I have a, a stressful emotional, physical reaction inside my body. Yes. So thought first, belief first, body experience second, and then the third step is I need to anesthetize myself to these uncomfortable body sensations. You know, tension, sure. stress, headache, pain. Uh, fear, anxiety, whatever. So I anesthetize myself with my vice of choice. In my case, it was video games. and other people, it's food or television or Alcohol. gambling or drinking or yeah. smoking or drugs or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so for me, do I have the urge to play? Um, not, not really. What I have instead is an awareness of, wow, I really 
I'm really observing that I really want to numb out and escape from yeah, my sure. stressful thoughts. Right. And so it can shift now away from video games. And, and now I notice it's, okay, am I doing anything else to replace that? And that's where cross-addicting comes in. Yes, right. And that's a term in the – have you heard of this term before? Of course, yes. Okay. So it's – cross for our listeners who don't know, cross-addicting is you replace one thing for another. In fact, this is actually used as a treatment technique. My mother, who um, uh, treated ad addicts in her uh, psychiatric practice, mm -hmm. she actually was quite overt. She says, you know, uh, if, if, you ch if someone's dealing with um, – Alcohol, yes. uh, you you switch them to something else yes. like religion. Caffeine. If someone's addicted. Yeah, yeah you, you just pass the baton basically right. to something to the lesser evil, a little less destructive on them. You right. know, so uh, so when you ask me, do I still want to play video games? Um, when I'm really stressed out, yeah, I have the awareness I really would like to play a video game, but I don't do it mm -hmm. because I'm very aware of the process going on in my head. Great. So that's something that you've worked through and obviously worked beyond to the point now where you have created a, a very powerful structured program that you can pay forward to others. Yeah, the the goal is to not, and the the goal is to kind of rewrite the entire model of how we look at addictions. Uh, and I love it. Not, and I'm, and I'm just focusing on video games because that's what I personally understand and experience and have gone through. But the model applies to anybody. Sure. So whether, and I deal with people who are food addicts or smokers or whatever in, in the clinic. Mm -hmm. But I'm just out here talking on video games simply because it's what I know best. Yes, of course. Uh, there's lots of experience. And I think there's a lot, of, um, a lot of people out there who are experiencing it, and there's not a lot of support. Yeah. And the other thing you should be aware of is that, the, that according to the 2015 uh, stats, and this, these are stats coming about the uh, Entertainment Software um, Association. Okay. And it's at the fastest growing demographic for um, wow. video game uh, use and abuse is not actually the under 18 year old males that everyone stereotypically thinks of. What is it? The, it's, it's actually older females. Wow. Uh, when I say older, I mean middle aged and older. Interesting. And I'm just looking at the stats right now. How? I mean, this will blow your mind. Uh, Whoa. Only 26% 20, of the video gamers out there are under the age of 18. 30% are between 18 and 35. 17% hmm. are between 36 and 49. And the remaining 27% are over the age of 50. Interesting. So if you add up those last two stats, 17% and 27% for 36 and above, that's 46% of the gaming population is over the age of 35. Interesting. And in fact, uh, women over the age of 18 represent 33% of the whole population compared to boys under 18, which only represent 15%. That is so surprising. So, so surprising. Well, here's how it happens. I can, I can, yeah, once I describe to you what it, how it, what it looks like, it yes. instantly makes sense. Okay. The, what happens is that the games that appeal to, to women um, over the age of 30 are the casual mini games on smartphones. Yes. Like okay. Yes. Okay. Like my mother, same, you know, same person who treated people like she's she's there playing boggle yeah. on her ipad oh, yeah. or scrabble or whatever okay so that's all included got, okay right or you sign up for the free you know you know these companies have now done you know they've done trade deals with these people but anyway the, like for example you should know that this november like this month um activision blizzard the very people that made diablo and world of warcraft the very games that are for the stereotypical 18 and under male crowd yes they bought the makers of candy crush whoa that's right one of those for 5.9 billion with a b and you know who's playing candy crush it's the women women right because exactly. and now this is totally making sense cuz i get these invitations you know, uh, on Facebook and whatnot, and they're from women. 
wanting me to play these games. I've never played one in my life, but wow. Okay. I hadn't even thought of that as video games. I think of video games as you're sitting in front of your TV with a remote control in your hand and it's, you know what I mean? And that you have just beautifully described the insidious nature of video games as an addictive uh, vice. Because people, it is, people don't take it seriously because, oh, it's a casual game. Oh, it's a casual, like, and, and I'm not saying all video games are addictive and all this, or all games are, all people play are addicts and all that. That's not what I'm saying at all. I mean, we don't have time to go into that whole, we had that discussion last time about right. what's right. an addict and what's not. Right. But it, it's like when we're coming up to the holidays, we're not just looking at the kids, even though it's something. I wrote, I wrote, an, I wrote an article on my website on the holiday survival guide, and I wrote it for parents and how to help their kids not vanish into their rooms and never come out and be totally aggro and and not interested in being around family. But I also, but I'm using that as a stepping stone to just. Just put it out there to try to wake up the parents of are you also right game like are you also doing the same behaviors? I don't say that overtly in the article, but it's the parents I'm now I'm also looking out for as being having issues of their own around video games. For sure. And, you know, also Facebook. I mean, I don't know if that would be even be included in this, but, you know, I, everywhere I go, restaurants, even with my friends and my husband and I included, we're both sitting here listening, you know, Facebook's right in the palm of our hands and you're constantly turning it on and just flipping through and looking. And is that considered part of this video game addiction or is that more? Okay. It's. Sort of. Uh, okay. the, the, what we're talking about, um, like we discussed on the last show, we talked about screen addiction yes, okay. as the superset. For sure. And then video game addiction is a subset of that. And then there's multiple subsets of video game addiction, whether it's on a handheld, whether it's on a console, on a computer. Okay. Is it online? Is it offline? The genres of games, etc. Gotcha. Another subset of screen addiction is social media. And then, of course, you've got, you know, a dozen major players in that, Facebook and Instagram Twitter and, and Instagram, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. So I would, put, I would put Facebook as a kissing cousin to video game addiction. For and sure. I, and I put them differently as more insidious than, say, as, than television, because television is a very passive experience. Right. Um, compa- but with social media and video games, it's interactive. Now, social media is much more passive in some ways than video games are. Right. Uh, video games are almost 100% interactive. Right. Where social media can be interactive and cannot be interactive. Right. Good so point. So it's a hybrid. For sure. Absolutely. Um, however, you know, it's just like the whole Facebook thing. I just really, I, I see where it absolutely can be addictive. And um, I don't know if people even realize, but you can just complete the way they set it up. You know, you have the app on your phone and it's constantly pinging you two new messages or whatever. You just want to click it and it's just a habit. It's com- it's like the cigarette smoker that just pick- picks up the cigarette and they don't even know they did it. What, you just click that button to see what's going on and all of a sudden you're sucked into 10 minutes of scrolling through Facebook. Um, Stephen Colbert on The Late Show just did a recent hilarious uh, a- example of this. I wish I don't remember the exact title of it, uh-huh. but he said, I went to go check this thing in my email, which led me to this Instagram thing, and then I learned about this in the in the newspaper site, which then led me to this Wikipedia page. And he listed like a, tr- a right? rabbit trail of twenty different websites, just yes. stemming off one little innocuous email. Oh, and so true. It was it was brilliant. It was absolutely perfect. He nailed it perfectly. And you should understand what you should know about um, the say the Facebook pings on your cell phone. Yeah, is that you've been habituated to yes. that sound of it's kind of like someone's calling you in your house you, oh, yeah. you reach for the phone yes and with the facebook ping it's the same thing you've been habituated to yes. someone needs me someone's trying to contact right me. now it's important yeah yeah 
And it, it's yeah. like it could be someone's liked someone else that you don't even know, the stupidest, most random thing, but they get you because they put that light there that some sort of activity has gone on and we're habituated to just absolutely look at it. And that usually isn't even the reason why we stay on. We start scrolling for more dopamine. You know, the whole brain's just really searching for that uh, quick, fast flash of information. Right, the the validation, it's neurological validation. Right. You, you've got, you, you're just seeking, like, seeking validation that I'm important and I mean something, that I matter. Yeah, And that sure. someone is connected to me. Mm-hmm. And shut off the Facebook thing and you're standing around and you're, you know, standing there waiting for a bus and there's not much going on except traffic, you know? Yeah, well, you know... Uh, it's, it's nice to feel wanted and needed or at least listened to or and engaged. participating in someone else's journey, you know? Yeah, and it's entertain it's like entertainment, you know, you're you're con- you're flipping through and reading things and seeing things. It's like instant entertainment and information that our brains are now so trained to be looking for. And I have to tell you, I actually removed the Facebook app from my phone a few months ago because of that. I just mm-hmm. am tired of getting sucked in and it just wasn't it wasn't supporting my productivity so I removed it and life was so much better and then I went on vacation and I put it back on because of course I'm on vacation and I wanted to post where I was and what I was doing and pictures and so you know I think it it would be interesting to do some sort of a little challenge right for the new year where we have people unplug and for at least for their phones right they're like so well there's a couple ways that that would be great. The problem with the video game side of it is that yeah. Apple doesn't let you remove the game center from their iPhones. Oh, uh, isn't that so, interesting? So there is a way around it, though. I figured it out. That's what I've done with my phone. Um, you- is that you can make a folder and label it as boring stuff and put all the apps that you can't physically remove from your phone without uh-huh. jailbreaking it. I don't want to jailbreak my phone, but yeah. you know, some people do do that. Yeah, 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 um, sure. So you can make a new app folder on your phone and put the game center and anything else that you feel is a boring or be really super unproductive and distracting. Yeah, I and love you put that. it at like the fifth screen, the fifth scroll screen away. You don't put it right on the front screen of your app. Right, so you don't you see know? it. It's not constantly sucking you in. Exactly. Yeah, that. I like that. And, and yeah, removing your Facebook, removing the Facebook app, removing any external games, any. Any of these social games, etc., that would be good to have a one-month fast. And and mm-hmm. the reason why that would be important, I mean, is just neurologically the the way to get over this dopamine rush that yes. comes with any addictive behavior mm-hmm. is you've got to take a fast away from the thing that's spiking out your dopamine, so right. your your the the receptors in your on their yes. nerve cells can kind of recalibrate and reset. Absolutely. And whether it, whether it's video games or, um, you, you know, uh, you know, people getting into uh, looking at stuff on the internet that's super risque, uh, right? And, and like it's really adrenaline rushing, especially for guys looking at that stuff. They need to like to take a fast. I was listening to uh, a neurologist talk about you know relationship issues why guys are losing interest in their partners, mm-hmm. and it's like. Well, you got to turn off the porn and then yeah, right? <laughs> take a break from it so your brain can reset, you know. Exactly. And 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 a lot of a lot of and this is the same thing with video games where they're we're getting people dopamine overloaded and then cuz yes. it's so interesting the video games. Mm-hmm. And then when you come off everything is boring. Right. And you, you got to be able to take a break and let your dopamine levels reset so the rest of the world becomes interesting again. So very, very true. And I, I really do think there's just not, besides what you're doing, there really isn't support out there for people to be able to do it. All right? I'm not even sure people are even at the point where they realize how adversely it's affecting their lives. Do you know what I mean? It's. I keep on my Google News feed. I've altered the the feed to give me all the updates on the video game and video game industry, etc. Yes. There's about one article published every two weeks on it now. Yeah, that's uh, good. In the popular media, and then in the journals, there's like an, there's now like 
full professors in specific universities devoted to this issue. So, and that's only really happened in the past five years or so, mm-hmm. like where it's really right. gotten more and more popular. Right. And there's a couple real scandalous deaths and stuff, like really, yeah. Ooh, like it's tragic, but but it is a bit ooh ah, like like the kid in China that chopped off his hand because he was sick of playing, he was addicted to video games. Like that's a real oh, story. Boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Or like the the negligence of like people's people starving in the family because the the dad was playing video games all day. Yeah, but those sure. those are really kind of sensationalist stuff. But that's a, it's symptomatic of that. There's a real issue going on, and it's not just the eighteen and under boys anymore. It's not. No, it's, it's, it's not. It's becoming. It's becoming like this is the same step. Most frequent female game players on average forty three years old. Whoa. Reading from the Amazing. same same stats. Uh That's... people wanna read about this, this uh uh the ESA dot com and just look look at their ES electronic um it's an entertainment software association. They have their 2015 PDF out there. Amazing. That um, is so interesting. Yeah, if you'll send that to us, we'll post it on the Facebook page, too, for the listeners. Sure, sure. Um, that's super interesting and, and actually quite mind-blowing. And I'm wondering if that those statistics are also, because when you think about it, it used to be that you know women who were at home caring for their home and, and, and raising children used to watch soap operas, you know, and then it was they watched, you know, know Oprah or whatever and and you know I'm not sure what the daily television is like but maybe now they're actually just playing video games I don't know uh that that has you're, you're getting into a much bigger socioeconomic issue there uh, with the yeah. with the loss of the single income family uh now True. We've got with inflation and yeah all sorts of other banker politics, simply like this is a very big topic. I know, right? <laughs> well, you have your work, uh, you, you have your work got, cut out for you. I've got the rise of the quick casual gaming because you don't have long swaths of time available anymore. Right. Uh, be, because you, there's not, life is not as simple as it was in the 50s. You know? Yeah, women uh, didn't just have all the, day to sit around. Well, I mean, raising kids is not all sit around job, but it's like there's not there's. I mean, that's talking about a typical, you know, stereotypical, I should say, which my grandmother was in, uh, 1950s environment where there was a lot more time, and particularly around the 60s and 70s, um, with the advent of not only the pill but also things like widespread availability of washing machines and mm-hmm. dishwashers and things like that. You suddenly get, uh, I think it was Elizabeth Gilbert in her book. It wasn't Eat, Pray, Love, but it was in her um, Big book, Magic. Commitment. Oh, uh-huh. She, 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 her, the book Commitment, she actually talked about that transition in the 60s and 70s where suddenly there was a lot more free time available to um, uh, uh, stay-at-home moms because a lot of the major chores were now becoming more automated. And this is where you get organizations Sure. Um, charitable organizations pop up around the United States. And oh, now because yeah. that time is now lost um, because of the economic situation that's going on, casual gaming is taking over because you can jump in for five minutes at a time, right? supposedly, <laughs> get, right. get your fix of escapism and come out. Right. Uh, the problem is if you do that 20 times a day, that still amounts to, you know, an hour and a half. Exactly. Right. For sure. So very, very interesting. So I just want to let everybody know we are talking to Dr. Sam Shea um, out from New Zealand. And uh, you are from your your website is 10pointwellness.com. And um, I encourage people to visit 10pointwellness.com. Uh, Dr. Sam Shea just has such, he's such a wealth of information. Um, we're talking today about video game addiction. And um, in just a few minutes, Sam's going to share with us his holiday survival guide uh, to help those families that are, are that do, where there is someone, one or more person in the family um, that is uh, addicted to gaming, whether it's on a handheld device, men, women, adults, children. We've talked about the fact 
fact that it's not the under 18 year old male that's the fastest growing population right now in video game addiction. Those statistics were amazing. We're going to put those on our Facebook page as well. Uh, Dr. Shea is going to share those with us. And um, he's put together amazing programs to support people who want to come away from the addictions, um, really get perspective on how much time they are spending uh, on the gaming, whether it's handheld or not. And um, and so I just wanted to catch everybody up to speed. But to learn more uh, from Dr. Shea, do visit 10pointwellness.com. And you can get his uh, his ebook Seven Ways to Gameless, which... Uh, yes, seven Ways to, to, to Game Less. Yeah, uh, Game how to, Less. How to, um, how to Unplug and Live More, and that's available as a free ebook for people, uh, practical for whether you're an 18 and under male teenager or a 30-plus female playing casual games. Awesome. And that's... That's at the website, 10pointwellness.com, mm-hmm. or if people are driving, they can text uh, the word video games, all one word, video games is one word, uh, to, uh, if they're in the U.S., double three, triple four. Double three, triple four, but don't do it while you're games. driving. <laughs> Do it when do it when you pull over. Don't do it while you're driving. <laughs> yeah, not while you're driving. Or and, and please, and they say don't text and drive. Please don't video game and drive either. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But can you repeat so people can go ahead and text you one word? Video games. Video games is one word to the number double three triple four. That's awesome. It, to double three triple four. Okay, wonderful. So um, if you don't mind, uh, you posted this amazing article, uh, Video Game Holiday Survival Guide. I read the whole thing. Of course, it speaks to me. I have a teenage boy that loves video games. And, you know, also, too, I've always got that uh, phone in my hand, and I'm always tempted to go on and look at Facebook and whatnot. But read your story, read your survival guide. I think it's imperative that each family member reads it. If you have anybody that's at all uh, doing any sort of gaming in your family, read this uh, holiday survival guide. Because I don't think people really realize how much this impacts our families and just, you know, the family mm-hmm. unit these days. Um, yeah, and, you know, I guess the one thing that really struck me about your article, your s- holiday survival guide, was the fact that, um, you know, you kind of reflect yourself on how you loved the holidays growing up, um, and it was sort of bittersweet. And can you just explain a little yeah, bit more? Yeah, sure. I love the holidays. I mean, t- to put a real... Bluntly, I love the holidays because I had more time to play video games, and I got more video games as gifts. And I disliked the holidays because I was obligated to spend time with family when I'd rather be playing video games. Exactly. It, just, it, it really, really comes down to that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not proud of that, but that's what was, and that's yeah. what I'm being open and honest yeah. about is like my journey from a small boy into adulthood dealing with this video game thing, and and I neglected my family a lot, mm-hmm. and. Um, I think I even mentioned it last time on the radio that I had that I actually gave away my dog because yes. of my video game issue because right. I felt I was neglecting my dog um, and my dog deserved better. Yeah. Yes. Right. And that that takes a lot. That takes a lot to share that and um, and and you know I think that what's so amazing is so many people are experiencing the same things in their house uh, now and over the holidays where there's a family member that's what they'd rather do is just go be on the video games and not have to do the social thing. The common story that I hear actually is especially like uh, this, like here in New Zealand. There's I have some uh, some patients of mine who told me about how they get. Like, they're used to having their nephew over for the summer, you yes. know, and then what happens is that just over the course of a year, from one summer to the next, suddenly this, this child comes to their house as normal instead of, then they just vanish into their room for two months. Wow. And it's just, it's new, it's not like, and they're like totally shocked at the one year difference, like it's night and day. Wow. And on a microcosm level, it happens on the holidays and also weekends, like the holiday survival guides. The strategies I'll share with you don't just apply to the holidays, right. uh, but they also apply to the weekends, which are micro holidays. And the strategies can be applied to all year round. And um, yeah, it's it's it was a, based on a collection of my experience reflecting back what I did to my own family, and then also on the other end, helping family members now deal with their own kids in the in the clinic. 
Right, right. And um, and so you basically share in this holiday survival guide, you share some useful tips uh, to keep the digital divide. And I love that word, the digital divide. Can you explain what that is? Sure. I think the digital divide may be uh, uh, people most familiarly are most familiar with it in regards to uh, there's the older generation that doesn't understand computers and the younger generation that grew up with them. And I'm talking about a different digital divide. The digital divide is a child locked in his own room on his own accord playing video games, divided from his family and visiting relatives on the other side having dinner. That's the digital divide I'm talking about. And the first, the the way to, that I recommend uh, parents deal with this is a couple things. Is that first is to uh, protect sleep over the holidays. Now the reason why That's great. is because when people and it's the holidays, a lot of parents like to, okay, play as late as you want, you can sleep in. Okay, be careful because that leads to a very vicious cycle of playing into the wee hours of the morning, yes, sleeping in, missing breakfast, missing being groggy and grouchy and otherwise disconnected and not present when people are around. And if you're there for lunch, you're like the, the kid's like in a half comatose state. And then they're kind of tired and drained and exhausted and can't enjoy the family activities during the rest of the day. And then suddenly their energy perks up again in the evening and they just game again into the late hours and the cycle repeats. So, so true. technically they may be present during part of the day, but they're just mentally gone because their sleep is screwed up and their right. circadian rhythms are screwed up and they've been skipping meals and all the rest of it. So the priority one is protect sleep. And the way to do that um, is a, what I recommend the following. Number one is I recommend a free program people put on their computer called F.LUX, F.LUX, which is a free program to put on the computer which dims the light of the screen to mimic the level of blue light that's in the sun based on your location and time. That's it's awesome. Blue light, yeah, it's a great program. Uh, blue light tells your brain it's time to wake up. That's the light that you see in the visual, visual spectrum um, when the sun comes up. And so if you can, you know, moder- if you can have an automatic program raise and lower the level of blue light on your, coming out of your screen, then you're going to minimize the effect on melatonin production and on your pineal gland and on your circadian rhythm. So that's number one. Just Google F.LUX, F.LUX. Love it. Wonderful free program. Great. Uh, the other thing to do to protect sleep is to make meals mandatory with the kids. And so and that will ensure that your children at least stay connected with relatives and you uh, over the holidays and to ensure that they don't screw up their hormone systems by skipping meals. And the priority I recommend is breakfast. And in fact, my first ebook, you know, was a breakfast guide because breakfast is the most important meal of the day for a right. large number of hormonal reasons of detail in the free ebook. But it's like you have to make sure your children eat breakfast. And in regards to letting them stay up late at night, like this, I'd say that it's not necessary. I really don't. Right. Because there used to be an advantage in the video game world to staying up until 3 a.m. playing online role-playing games because there was less people around, therefore less competition for more loot and more, you know, killing higher Wins. experience monsters and all the rest. That's what I did. Yeah. You know, I mean, I actually hid my light. I put a towel between the bottom crack of the door to, oh, pre- boy. to prevent people from seeing light coming out that I was on the computer. Um, but nowadays, that's over. Uh, people are playing all over the world at all times of the day. And if everyone's on their home at the holidays, everyone's playing late at night. So there's no more advantage to people playing late at night anymore. Okay, right. And it's and it's only going to do damage. Um, right. And so it's not necessary. The right. next thing I'm going to talk about can be pretty um, pretty touchy. It's about the issue of relatives coming in who want to be the fun ones, oh, like yeah. the cool uncle yeah. that wants to be like, hey, I got this new video game console, like for Billy, isn't yeah. aren't I awesome? And like. You, yeah, and it's totally not cool because you've just introduced yeah. a massive disruptor into the house, and now as a parent, 
you're going to be you're going to look bad in the eyes of both your uncle, uh, both the uncle and your kid as a stick in the mud, right? Because it's like you've given them a gift and then you take it like they were given a gift and you just take it away, right? So have um, that talk with relatives ahead of time. Absolutely. Yes, make makes sure that sense. they honor the rules, and whether it's food or video games, they've got to honor the rules in your house. I love it. You know? Yes, absolutely. The other thing that the parents should do is require a certain amount of exercise and outdoor time before and after gaming. Yes. Like, it's a requirement. This is, you can game for a certain amount of hours pending that you eat meals, go to bed at this time, exercise and are outside so much before and after um, playing video games. Fabulous. And. It's it's a way to ensure that the, the kid doesn't completely self destruct and vanish because at least they're getting outside. I love it absolutely. Uh, the other thing is to place strict time limits and on the on the exact times and lengths of gaming. So if, if the family allows two hours or three hours or five hours or whatever, have that stated and be specific about what times of day are allowed, but also right. to be flexible. If it's solo gaming versus online social gaming versus in-person social gaming with their buddies in the room, so right. as an ex- like you want to reward interactivity. So, if, for example, if you allow two hours total of solo gaming, then say you can allow three hours total if it's gaming online with people. But you allow sure. four hours total if they're all in the house together live because so of the social like this- piece. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Great. And so you, you be be allow for that and reward um, interactivity. The other thing is to have real consequences. Like if they skip a meal, they don't exercise, they they go out late or whatever, then take privileges away. And the most important thing I can recommend to parents, and this is so critical, present the rules ahead of time in writing. And then let your child come back to you with their, quote, unquote, pun intended, game plan. Love it. Let them come to you saying, I want to play with my friend through these hours. Therefore, that means I get to play four hours instead of two here at this time. I want to do this thing. I'm going to eat meals here. I'm going to exercise this. So they come to you with full awareness of what the rules are. So there's no argument, there's no surprise, and you don't get what's called gamer rage, which is you're, you've had this experience, right, where you interrupt your, your kid playing oh, games yeah. and he, like, barks at you? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So if there's no surprises and they came to you with their game plan, everything's on the table. I love it. And everyone's in agreement. And they, were, they had a little bit of say in what the schedule is going to be, so they're kind of empowered in that. So we go, we go in with the written rules. They come back sort of talking about it, and nego- not negotiating it, but with their input, and then you have a plan. Yeah, and, and they get to learn this, the adult skill of making and keeping agreements. You know, that's, I love it. That's yeah. They have to be an adult. They have to make and keep agreements, and this is a wonderful way to build that process for them. Fabulous, Dr. Sam Shea, you are amazing. What a wealth of information. Um, we're talking today with Dr. Sam Shea. We spoke with Dr. Sam Shea today about video game addiction. Uh, this show will be up on our Facebook page next week. If you missed it, didn't hear it all, you want to hear it again, it'll be on our Facebook page next week. You can reach Dr. Sam Shea at 10 Point Wellness. And we will have you back on again because I know you're going to be a a periodic guest with us and we're so grateful. Um, Really appreciate you taking the time today, Dr. Shea, and we will follow up again soon with you on the continued topic of video game addiction. Thank you so much, Heather. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Take care and have a good holiday. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.